Dave here. Welcome to the Centurion's Review. This is the top five alternatives to dice in wargaming. Dice have always been the most common way to achieve randomization in war games. They are fun to roll and the many different types allow you to generate a random number from 1 to 4 or even 1 to 100. A new trend in dice is to use custom dice with the results from a combat results table printed directly on them instead of numbers. The benefit is it eliminates cross-referencing a combat results table, but you cannot have that many types of results if it's just a six-sided dice. Dice have served wargamers well over the years, but some designers have tried other randomization methods, and we'll go over the pros and cons of those. Before we begin, please click the yellow helmet in the lower right section of the video if you haven't subscribed to this channel yet. Number five is the finger system. This crazy system was designed by Tadashi Ihara and used in Stop the Micro Game from Chaosium. Essentially, in cases where you have four or more units working together on a task, it automatically succeeds. Otherwise, if three units work together, it's called a two-finger resolution. If two work together, it's a three-finger resolution. Last, if it's just one unit working on a problem, it's a four-finger resolution. Both players will pound their right fist into their palm twice, and on the third pound, they display up to as many fingers as the resolution calls for. For example, in a four-finger resolution, they'll display one to four fingers. If both parties display the same number of fingers, then the attacker wins. This method might be fun for younger players, but it seems to slow down the game, and adults will probably find it to be a wee bit childish. Alternative number four is mutations of rock, paper, and scissors. These are not used to determine a random number, but to randomly determine the winner of an event. This method is an attempt to make opponents interact in a more social and hopefully enjoyable manner. The problem is there is nothing you can do to gain an advantage. If you're playing with dice in a combat results table, you can use terrain to add modifiers to help your defense. Or with some rule sets, you can do like a flank attack to get a helpful modifier if you're attacking. You can't do this with rock, paper, and scissors. A mutation of rock, paper, and scissors exists in the game One World by metagaming. In this mutation, each player's children units secretly transform themselves into fog, blade, or stone, and then reveal themselves simultaneously during combat. Blade will defeat Fog, Fog will defeat Stone, and Stone will defeat Blade. Number three is drawing number chits from a cup. The advantage to this is you can have number ranges outside of what dice normally do. For example, you can have numbers from 0 to 13 if you wish, along with a plus sign that signifies that you can draw two additional numbers. Another advantage is that you can have the player place the used chits in another cup, so each chit is used exactly once before the next cup is used. You now have an even distribution of numbers if that is what the game designer wants. The disadvantage to drawing chits from a cup is that it is tedious. In addition, if the even distribution method is used, then the player will always know what the last number in the cup will be. Space Infantry from Lock and Load uses the chit pool method. Alternative number two is the playing card method. In this method, a standard playing card deck is used. The value of cards is used to determine the winner of an outcome. Some games also use the color of the cards to determine initiative. Morgan's A Coming is a postcard war game where you add the card's value to the attacking unit's combat factor and subtract the defending unit's combat factor and add modifiers. If the result is a 6 or greater, the defender loses a step. The playing card method is a lot of fun, and as mentioned, it has the benefit that it can be used with modifiers. And the number one alternative to dice is the custom card method. Custom cards can be used essentially in the same manner as the playing card method, but they had the added bonus of having an event on them. Essentially, the card can be played for either its value or its event. This gives the player more options when strategizing. Turning Point from Worthington Games has done an excellent job of using the custom card method. I've also wondered what a war game would be like if it used a spinner like in the game of life. After you're done laughing, listen to the advantages it would offer. You could have a custom number range such as 0 to 14 and a plus sign or symbol that signifies that you get to use numbers from two additional spins instead of one. 
In addition, you could have other symbols on it, such as a retreat symbol or a disordered symbol right on the spinner. It probably would be a great substitute for one or two dice, but it would be impractical for large numbers of dice due to the fact that you would have to keep spinning the same spinner. Now let's hear from you guys. Please post in the comments section below what your favorite alternative to dice and wargaming is. I'll include Amazon affiliate links in the video description of the games mentioned in this article, as well as links to the ones that I've already reviewed. Thanks for watching, and please click like on the video if you liked it, and if you haven't done so already, please subscribe to this channel, and as always, have a good evening.